course. Go ahead. About uh, workshop six, mm. I was doing it uh, during the study week, and I think I'm almost done, but I think if you follow the uh, instruction, there are one specific line that is not issued as expected. Um, so the output is not right, you mean? I think so. I'll double check yeah. it tonight and I'll, and I'll check it out and I'll let you know. Thank you. I'll double check it tonight. Anything else, anyone? Hey, can you also start recording on the blue button too? Or? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that too. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, so uh, we want to talk about files, and that we kind of talked about it in uh, in. Um, OP244 and um, uh, you know if you want to create a, we know about the, uh, the uh, hierarchy of files hopefully I'm just gonna quickly go through it just to remind you of what they are um, we have a series of uh, uh, classes in uh, in C++ that deals with input and output now uh, mother of all these uh, uh, classes it's iOS instead of standing at the top. That iOS is the one that has all the basic definitions for input output uh, if um, things that we want to do and all the flags and the constants and the things that you have. That's why um, like when you are actually uh, setting the justification for left and right usually you go iOS left, iOS scope resolution, do stuff like this. So use all the basic uh, definitions of input and output. Out of this thing, two classes were inherited, and the two classes that we have are, so let's put this one over here, so two classes, and these two classes are um, iStream and OStream, which you have worked with and you know exactly how they, how they, uh, uh, act and everything. So we have iStream and we have OStream. So iStream is responsible for all the input streamings and OStream is all the output streamings. From OOP244 we recall that we actually have these uh, guys inherited down into two um, uh, classes. Uh, these two classes are OF stream, IF stream, and OF stream. So we have IF stream, that is a child of I stream, and OF stream, that is a child of O stream. And these two are uh, uh, Out of these two, another class is inherited, and that class, it's multiple inheritance, we call it, that is only uh, possible in C++. Uh, if there's a multiple inheritance between these two, and that is the class fstream. So this is what we have. This is the hierarchy of input-output stream uh, classes that we have. Now, iStream and OStream by nature are unique stuff, which means they, uh, uh, just give me a second, let me turn on this light, suddenly everything in the office went off and I'm in pitch black room. Just a second. Oh, right there be light. Good. <laughs> Sorry, I just, uh, for a second, I, I couldn't actually see myself. <laughs> uh, it was a little too dark, scary. Oh, there you go. That's me. All right. So, so yeah. Um, and uh, uh, iStream and OStream by nature are uh, classes that uh, deal with unique things. Like when you are doing dealing with iStream, um, it only works with... Uh, 
the console input. So it's, it's so what you receive from your keyboard that goes into iStream. Because of that, they instantiated iStream. iStream iStream's uh, constructor is private. You cannot instantiate it. So it is being instantiated somehow that we don't need to talk about into uh, an object, and that object is called CN. So it actually gets, it, it's actually got instantiated into an object called CN. So the CN object that we have is an instance of iStream, and it is an external global object, which means at any moment in, uh, in IO stream header file, they have external iStream CN. So this CN uh, is uh, uh, available to any class, any module, any code that includes iStream, and it's the same object. It's a global object. That's why you can actually use it everywhere, and the terminal keeps track of everything that you're doing. Um, we are okay down to this point, hopefully. Um, oh, let me see. All right. Um, so we are making more poll ready so I can keep asking questions. So are we okay with down to this point? All right. So so uh, now O stream was instantiated into three objects. Okay? One is C out that, that you know you already work with. So one uh, that that uh, that you already know about is uh, C out. And we have two more. Why do we have these two more? Because we know that by nature, so this is actually the uh, the O stream is instantiated into three objects and they're all public over there. These three objects over here are, are available everywhere. The one that you normally insert characters that shows on screen we call C out. The other one is called C error and the last one is called C log. So these three objects are available everywhere. You usually use C out to do all your printings for the terminal to show everything that you have. But if C out fails, you know that I stream and O stream are very shy objects. Anything goes wrong with them, they are not active anymore. You have to clear them to be able to reuse them. You remember that, right? Do we remember that? bring this closer so I can <laughs> it is a little too far from me I'm using the TV that they installed on the on the wall as my secondary monitor over here so I have to kind of travel go far to get to it yeah anyway so 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 because of that C out thingy that we have over there if C out goes wrong you want to still print your error messages or you want to um, do something to sh like, or you want to do debugging statements and you want to separate them in another object so you can manually set the object in an error state so therefore that object doesn't print that C log. So you can print on all those things exactly as you're doing on C out, but you can, but there are three of them. They're all printing on terminal. Don't think that they are, they have different places to go. They are all printing on terminal, but they have separated states. So if one fails, it doesn't affect the other one. Uh, are we okay with, with with this? If there is any question, either raise your hand or just uh, uh, fire up the question. Turn on your uh, microphone and let's talk. All right. What else? So that's that. So iStream is already instantiated in CN, O stream is instantiated in C out, C error, and C log. So um, 
what about if stream and of stream if stream and of stream these are objects that are children of if stream and of stream they do everything that uh, uh, i stream and o stream does with absolutely no difference uh, but they are doing it to files like if and we know that if, if i'm a programmer and i want to create an output uh, uh, application and an out, a class whose job is to read from file <clears throat> first of all it's not one file it's 50 different files so there are no global unique objects the constructor of i stream and of stream is very public and you can use use it to instantiate anything you want so you can go if stream or let's say of stream <clears throat> to actually create um, uh, a file object but the uh, all the specifications of, of these are in an in the f stream header file if you want to use them you have to go to f stream header file and by the way uh, before I forget let me just Oops, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. I wanted this one, not that one. Yeah, there you go. I want to set my standards so I can do my things properly. Anyways. So if you want to write into a file, you simply create file, and that file, you can name it anything you want. So I don't know, for example, nums.txt, so I, I want to print some numbers in a file. Uh, <clears throat> all I need to do is to create the file, so vector, say uh, double, I have vector double uh, d, and it is, say, 10.1, um, 11.2, and say 12.3 and um, 13.4 and so on and so forth so I have all these things in that vector and obviously I need to include vector 2 <coughs> okay so now I can say for say auto uh, v and d I can simply say file exactly as I printed on a string screen I can actually print it in the file and I go file file and L and when I run this program obviously after the program executes and done and everything's beautifully um, created uh, there is uh, no output on the screen because uh, everything is actually getting redirected into the file so three years later when it compiles <clears throat> you will see that if I actually open the uh, files I'm gonna have a nums.txt and the files the, the values are written in a file as you see um, any uh, problem down to this point any questions or problems down to this point all right good so and uh, if I want to read from the files, the story is the same. So if I have something like, I'm going to put this one as uh, text input.cpp. And I don't think we need this structure over here anymore. It's kind of distracting. Let's, uh, this um, uh, things that I have written, so I'm going to clear them all. Let's go back in here. And if I want to read from the file, the story is exactly the same. Absolutely no difference. I create an IF stream file called nums.txt double, and I'm going to read from it one by one. And it shows all the files that I have in, a, in all the information I have in a file. It reads it and brings it back up, and uh, it's going to show me the values I had in the file. Okay. So um, are we okay down to this point? I called the other one test by by mistake. So it's let me fix this text input and this one is text output. Input. Okay, save. 
and always remember the the values that you are actually putting inside the file and uh, the formatting and everything that you did with iStream and OStream, everything applies to that. So with this, we have absolutely no problem. When you look at the file and um, like if, if, if we actually uh, uh, load the file and take a look at it, um, let me bring it up. So when you actually look at the, the file that you have with the, with whatever that is created, so I'm going to bring that nums.txt, and also let me open up the text output. So <clears throat> when we look at this nums.txt, as you see, it's it's several characters long, okay. And I put a new line over there. I don't know why did I do that, but uh, I'm just going to remove it. it. Doesn't make any difference. So if I do something like this over here, and do the printout in a file as it goes. If I actually look at the values inside the file, why is it not updating? Oh, I, <laughs> I put it in the wrong one. Just give me a second, I put it in here. So if I run the program and I look at uh, <coughs> the nums.txt now, obviously because those are the things that I printed over there. If I actually look at nums.txt, this is what I'm going to see. So I, obviously because I didn't fix, set it to fix, it rounded it and put it in a f the best proper way that it founds it, finds it necessary. And if you look at it, now the file grew bigger. So when I had it originally with just <clears throat> a few uh, digits after the decimal point, The file was smaller, but as soon as I change it, then it became bigger. Now I change it back. So the size of your file shrinks and grows depending of the format that you are writing. Um, so um, is that clear for everyone? Do we understand this? All right. So, but there is another way of doing uh, output. So if I have this output that I created like this, and let's actually make this one a oh, bit bigger, like that, okay? If I actually look at the file that I have, and when I'm actually creating the file, I would say, I, instead of actually calling this num.txt, I'm going to call it bin, okay? And I'm going to say the file that I am having over here, iOS, is binary. So the difference between the file that it has right now and the file that it had before is that you don't, when you, when you are on, on, uh, uh, Matrix, you don't need to do this. All files are binary. We don't have any difference between text and binary because that's a Linux system. Or if you're on a Mac, that's a Unix system. On Windows, still we are backwards compatible with DOS that is coming out. So that's why you have ASCII. And anyways, that's why we have this binary thing. If you don't write binary on Matrix, it's binary. It doesn't make any difference. But anyways, what I'm saying is that instead of using the insertion operator over here, you can actually tell to the, to the to, to file that I want you to write into the file the values that I want to print. So I want to print V, right? So print V over there inside the thing to the size of V. So what happens over here, and in here I have to say go to the address of V. So essentially, you don't worry about that error thingy that you see over there. I'm just mentioning to you what write does. So with write, you give it an address, and then you say how many bytes. So the write function 
dumps the memory that this pointer is pointing to, to that many characters, and writes it right into a file. And what is a type of a character? Like when I say character, you understand this is a byte. A character is a byte. It's not a character like A, B, C, D. It's, it's literally a byte. A character, when we say in C language, what we mean is actually a byte. Do we understand this? But for some unknown reason that I really don't know why, we dealt with void pointers. You understand that when you have a void pointer, you can put any address in it, and the void pointer accepts that address. Then you can cast it to whatever you want. Do you remember that? For some reason, they did not do that in write, which means in write, they are actually receiving a character address over there. So what you need to do in here is actually, you have to actually cast that to a constant character pointer and say the address I'm sending to you, I know it's double, cast it to a constant character pointer. And if I do a write like this, the values, as you see, are exactly as what we had in the other one. But the difference over here is that now I'm writing it in nums.bin, and I'm saying write the contents of a V which holds the double. So essentially, it writes it uses 8 bytes to write 10.1, then uses another 8 bytes to write 11.230, something, something, and it puts those values in there. So if I actually open the file and take a look at it, there is a nums bin over here, and when I open that one, this is what you see. Oh, interesting. It doesn't allow me to change the size of the font in here. Oh, that's crazy. But anyways, can you see the, the, the numbers over there? Can you see the values over there? The numbers? Yeah. So if you look at all the numbers, so essentially the first eight bytes, so in here, as you see, each one of these is an ASCII code. So this is one, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is the first number. And then one, two, three, four, one, this is the second one. And it keeps going like that. So essentially it dumps eight byte, eight byte, every single double into the file and the file actually look, it becomes like that. So it's exactly like the memory dump that you have. So you won't, a human being cannot read this anymore. And if you want to actually read this, so let me just write this over here, bin output dot, t, uh, dot cpp. If you actually want to read from this, what you need to do is to actually uh, open the file for reading and read it one by one. So uh, there, there's uh, uh, two ways of doing it. Either I can do IF stream over here. I don't need the vector. I'm just I'm going to have over here double val double V. Okay. <clears throat> and in here I can say. What should I say? Mm, um, reading it one by one. So in here I'm going to say um, I'm going to say uh, while so this um, in, and in here I'm going to say uh, let's, let's do it like this. I'm going to say file read uh, I'm going to say over here, character pointer. I'm going to add, uh, cast as a character pointer, say the address of V. So I'm going to say, get the add and size of V. So I'm going to read one, one double from the file and I'm going to print it out. So I'm going to say, see out V. Okay. So I'm just reading the very first, very first, uh, did I change it? Oh, I changed the wrong one again. I get excited and I change the file that I actually rewrote the thing. So let me just uh, get this one and put it in here. Save. Yeah. So now. There you go. 
So now if I run the program over here, now if I write the program, I'm saying read <coughs> into the address of V to the size of a double right from the beginning of the file, whatever it is. And we know the very first one we wrote was like 10 something something, right? So when you actually take a look at it, the value comes out like that. When you are reading it binary, you can actually read it. As you see, it's 10.1. But if you actually look at the contents of the binary file, there is nothing that you understand. It's impossible for you to understand what's in there because that 10.1 is actually its memory dump has been it's been saved over there not the uh, actual double do we understand not the not the text conversion of the double do we understand this now what's good what is good about this let me just show you something <clears throat> i'm going to go back to that uh, so uh, let me just comment this for a second and bring up the, the binary thingy that we had. I'm going to make that file a little bigger. And uh, I should have uh, put uh, characters of uh, sequence over here. So it's text. First, we did text output. So that's a dash and then text input. That's b dash. And then binary output, that's C dash. Yeah, so I'm just going to get this copy and put it in here. I'm just going to make it a little bigger. So um, 12.2, 13.4. <laughs> point six, sixteen point seven, and seventeen point eight. So I'm just putting more stuff in there so um, we can actually fiddle around and play with it. So I'm gonna run this to recreate the nums. So nums nums is gonna be bigger now. Come on. Okay. So we have this. So let's copy this back into that file that we had. So we, so when you execute it at home, so you can actually see what it was. Save. All right. So <clears throat> now, what is beautiful about this one is this. If you want to read the sixth double inside a text file, what do you need to do? You need to start reading the doubles one by one until you get to, so you have to have a loop, start from the beginning, read six times, and go to the sixth double. Do we understand this? And why do we do that? Because when you look at a text file, the values that you have inside a text file. The values inside a text file are, are, not, are not formatted properly, which means one of them is three characters, the other one is one, the other one is one again, so, so three characters, two, two, and the other one is four. So you don't know what is the length. You cannot say go to pass these many bytes, so you've got to be straight in front of the double. But when you are saving everything as binary, then what you have is perfectly aligned to the number of uh, bytes that you have. So take a look at this. This is the first double. This is the second double. This is the third double, fourth, fifth. So these are doubles, and each one of them is exactly eight bytes, no matter what you put inside the double, because a double occupies eight bytes in memory, it's going to have eight bytes in files, no matter how long or how small is your double. No matter what you do, each double size is eight bytes. Do we understand this or do we rather do we appreciate what just happened? 
because of this fact, now if I want to read the fifth double, I do not need to actually loop through anything and go over there. So I read one, now I can say file dot seek G. It means seek for reading. Seek G is for getting, read. Seek P is to write, to put. So I'm going to say seek G and in here I can simply put exactly where I want to go, how far I want to go. So I can simply say size of, let's say for example, uh, V, that's the size of the double, or double I could say, it doesn't make any difference, multiply by, so I want to skip three doubles after this and read the next one, so I read the first one, now I'm going to skip three, and now I'm going to read the next one. So now if I do this, I'm going to read the first one, and then skip three, and read the next, so this one is going to be the fifth one. And as you see, with no loop, I jump exactly to the next record and I can read exactly the one that is sitting at that one that is 13.34. So if you look at the source code for uh, uh, the values we have written over there, you will see that this one was the first one. I skipped, uh, I, I, oh, sorry, I seeked to, so, so I seeked to uh, size of V multiplied by three. That's three doubles. So it starts from the beginning of the file, goes three doubles further, which means it skips one double, two doubles, three doubles, and now stands right in, the, in front of the third one. So any one, I, any of these doubles I want to, I can actually get them one by one and read them. Do we understand this? All right. So, for example, let me just, uh, so this one is going to be uh, binary read. So, d binary read dot cpp. So, now, take a look. I can actually go in here and I, that seek thingy has so many different versions, okay? In here I can say file dot, okay? Um, I can say seek g, and if you see there are two different ones. One is the position and the other one is offset and which direction. So I can say go zero bytes, and in here I'm going to say iOS end. So what happens, this is going to jump to the end of the file. Now in here I can say file.telg. Telg, it means tell me where you are now. And if you look at telg, you will see that it actually ret returns a stream position. So I'm going to say I'm going to say std stream pause stream position um, um, I'm going to say uh, s and I'm going to say set to that's the value so now I am at the end of the file okay so what I need to do over here <clears throat> is uh, uh, simply say up uh, C out S and take a look at it and see where I am. And as you see, it is 64. Let's take a look at the number of things that we had. How many did we have? We had eight. And eight multiply eight is 64, which means that's the size of the file. So essentially, when you go to the end of the file and tell me, tell the, com the compiler where you are, that's going to be the, the, the uh, number of things that I have over there. Now, if I want to actually see how many doubles I have over there, I can say S divided by size of double. And now if I take a look at the second one that is coming out, you will see that the outcome will be 
8. So without any loop, I can actually see how many records I have in a file. Now, that double could be an employee, could be a, any type of class that you have. Like this, you can see exactly how many records you have in a file because every single record is exactly the same size as uh, the other one. Are we okay with this? So, so just in here I'm going to say size and number of recs in a file, okay? So now take a look. Now I'm gonna use fstream, so I'm gonna bring this code and show it to you. So. Now I'm going to use fstream. I'm going to say fstream file nums.bin iostream iOS binary. Now I'm going to say while fread because read returns uh, iStream. If it fails, it's going to re if the, the, it is uh, uh, overloaded for uh, Boolean casting and it's going to return false. So I'm fine with that. I'm going to say read from the file and I'm going to say uh, ifstream over here binary read from the file, size of D, and keep going. And obviously, it's going to fail when it reaches to the end. Now I'm going to say clear yourself. Now seek to the stream position to multiply by size of double. Read another one. Now I'm going to read the third one. Now I'm going to say from there, come to, from that location, which is iOS current, comes come to backwards and read and display it. So as you see now, I can go back and forth in a file, read different types of things, and uh, let me just actually walk through it so you can actually see how it works. It's it's better to see it in action. So let's run it step by step and see. Look at this. So as you see now, it opens it up, rings it one by one. So these are all the values that we have written in the file, and it's going to keep reading it until it fails. And when it fails, I'm going to say, okay, I know you failed, clear yourself. So I recognize that you fail, clear yourself, go to the, uh, let me just make it a little, turn it a little to right so we can see this. All right, so I'm going to say, Go to the stream position of two multiply by size of double. So it's going to start from the beginning because I didn't mention from where. It's going to start from the beginning, go two doubles further in a file from the beginning and read that one and print it. So that's the second one as you see. That's the third one because it passed to 12.23, 12.23. Now I'm going to say from the location that you are right now, come twice backwards. So it's going to come to white backward read it and as you see I'm coming back over here so this is what happens it comes it reads these two it reads it skips to reads this one now it's standing on the third one now I'm gonna say go two times back that's one and that's two so it stands right before here now I'm gonna say read that one and that's the next one it's reading and it's printing it out are we okay with this? One thing you need to notice that every time you are reading, it advances the file pointer forward. So if you, so if I essentially do something like, so let me just, uh, I'm gonna say over here, uh, let me see the F, I'm gonna say, moving in binary file, moving back and forth. Um, in a binary file. Okay, 
so so if I wanted to for example do something like this I'm gonna say while read so it reads it and after it reads I'm gonna say file dot seek G then in here I'm gonna say minus one so go backwards multiply by size of <clears throat> double and then print until you fail what is the output of the current program people oh and I again modified the bad wrong file give me a second don't save what is the output of the current program what do you say Please take a look at it. What's going to be the output of the current program? Who can tell me? The last one double value. A 17.8. You think it's going to print 17.8? Yeah. Mm, so let's walk through it. Uh, don't ha don't hang up stay over there you were the uh, Jennifer you were the brave one that answered so I'm gonna use you can I okay okay so it's gonna read the first one correct so what's gonna go in D pardon me it's gonna read the first one correct yes so what's gonna go in D uh, 10 the address 10.1 10 10.1 10 .1. perfect then it's gonna print it out correct uh, it's yes. gonna print it. Now yes. it's gonna go one back. Correct? Yes. So it's gonna go back where? Again on ten point one. Point one. And it's gonna read it and print it and read it. So this program never ends. It's an endless loop. If I actually oh, run okay. the program, I have to first stop the other one. Yes. If I actually run the program, this program never stops. It's an endless program printing 10.1 forever. Take a look. Okay, got you. All right. So that's why I'm saying going one backwards. What's going on? Oh, shoot. Give me a second. Actually, it should, it should not. It should. What's going on here? Let me just walk through it. That should be an endless loop. File read, prints, seek backwards, seek G, read. Why did it fail? Huh. Why? <laughs> this shouldn't fail, people. I'm doing I'm doing something wrong in here. Let me try something else. I want to see what am I doing wrong. I just want to try something. Give me a second. <clears throat> Why is it failing? Oh, of course it fails. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> it's not minus. I, I forgot to say from current location. <laughs> My apologies. From current location. Because... If, it, if I don't say from current location, I'm going to say seek to a negative number. Uh, there is nothing over there. If it wants to read something over there, it, there is no negative address. That's wrong. It's going to fail. Not Seek is not going to fail it. The read is going to fail it. So that was right. I forgot to mention from current location. Because, <clears throat> okay, what was my mistake? When I did like this, okay, I'm saying from the beginning of the file, go one double backwards. First of all, this seek is not going to fail. Remember, seeking never fails the file. It's the action of reading that fails. So if I actually do something like this over here, look at this, file.telp, tell g, see what's going to happen. If I run this now, As you see, it's going to read the first one, print it. Now I'm going to say go backwards. If I do like this, it says minus one. You see that? 
So it didn't fail. It actually tries to do it and goes backwards in things, and it, it, it just doesn't work. But the, the action that actually makes, the, so if I actually check to see if it failed or not, it's not going to fail. The, so if I say over here, <coughs> if file, in here I'm going to say C out, seek G failed, if file dot fail. This is a better example. And if it fails, it means C++ changed since this is changed in C++ to any, but it, it, it wasn't like this. So I'm just going to hopefully, hoping that it's not going to be a change. So let's, let's go through it. So now if I go like this, you see that it actually shows that one. Now in here, holy mother, it actually fails it. Okay, so it didn't used to fail, but it's failing now. So I know that if you... Uh, it, this is interesting. Hmm. It actually fails it. Surprise. Um, I'll check something else and we'll find out. But um, it didn't use to fail. We'll, we'll go through it and I'm going to explain it again. If maybe there is something else. But bear with me down to this point. Uh, let's go back to what I, uh, the mistake I made. So the mistake I made was that I did not put over here iOS current. If I put iOS current, then that's going to be the endless loop that I was talking about. Because from that location, it goes backwards once, and then it keeps reading over and over and over, and it's going to always print 10.1 10, 10 forever. So that's the endless loop, which I have to shut down. Because yeah, So um, let me just try something else and see if... So in here, I'm going to say seek G to... A thousand multiplied by size of double from the beginning because that should fail. I'm going to say if file dot fail seek g Try this one, okay? Now, <clears throat> now I'm saying read the first one and print it, which it printed. Now I'm gonna say go a thousand doubles further. Now there are no ta thousand things in being; it's much smaller than that. So now here, there we go. So <clears throat> that's the thing. So if the value that you have over here is negative, seek G fails. But if the value that you have is greater than the size of the file, seek G doesn't fail until the file reads. So now if I come over here and it tries to read a thousand doubles further, that's when it fails. Knock the CG. So re seek. So remember, seeking in a file does not fail. It is the action of reading that fails. Uh, did I make myself clear over here? Hopefully. All right. So in here, I'm going to say seeking will not fail. But reading will. All right. <coughs> Gene, uh, uh, seek does not fail. Remember that. That's important. These are uh, the, the the mistakes that I made throughout writing C++ in my in my life, and and I'm just telling you telling because for me I, I take. Like, you had no idea how long I was debugging my code trying to, to see what the heck happened. Why is it not failing? Why is it not stopping? And, and I found out that seek doesn't fail. And that was a bad surprise for me. Anyways, so that's that. Uh, 
what else we need to talk about in here about files? Oh yeah, that's a good example. So what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to bring, there you go, these files over here. Let me go to my sandbox. <clears throat> so I had these prepared. things I want copy all right so I have a class called employee I'm gonna put these two over here so employee I'm gonna add those so as you see, I have an employee over here. Employee has employee number. It has a name that is 52 characters, a maximum of 50. You can set the, the, the salary, employee number, and name with a constructor, as you see. Um, it has a, a comparison operator between the two employees and returns which one is bigger than the other one. I have created standard um, print to print and a standard read to read. And uh, then I have uh, uh, the O stream um, overloaded for both directions for as, as a standard thing that I do. So uh, we're okay with employee. Uh, hopefully we don't need to go through it uh, uh, to uh, look at the code. Are we okay with the employee? All right. So now that we are okay with this thing, <clears throat> the next thing I want to uh, show you is this. So <clears throat> so I am going to write those employees into a file. So this is the series of employees that I'm creating and I'm just creating a text file and writing them all in that file. And as soon as I run the program, <clears throat> it's going to instantiate the employees for me and one by one it's going to write it into the file and therefore I'm going to have a file over here called employee.txt. Are we okay with this? or you want to look at the code. Oh, we're okay with this, good. <clears throat> so, and if I want to read the information, read the, uh, the files from, read the information of, an, of the employee and go through it one by one, so, <clears throat> In here so in here I'm gonna say uh, um, EFGH I'm gonna call it uh, uh, composite uh, text out okay now if I want to read these files read this information one by one <clears throat> this is what I have to do so I'm gonna write a uh, show record over here. What my record is doing is this, is simply saying uh, uh, to show an employee in certain row, what I need to do, I'm going to create a, temporary, uh, um, a local employee over here, clear the F stream if it's um, to make sure it's not fail, go to the beginning of the file, then start reading from each employee because this is a text file. When you look at the file, <clears throat> when you look at the information inside the file, this is what you see. So showing that again, this is what, and they're all in different sizes. And don't forget, this file is actually something like this. 
So it's not like a text file in a tabular way. It's series of characters separated with backslash ends. We know that. And because of that fact, each record has a different size based on the name and the size and employee and employee number and all those good stuff. Are we okay with this? Now, if I want to actually read the contents of this text file one by one and go through it, if I want to do that, and if I want to traverse through it, this is what I have to do. If I want to write a function and I want to say I want the fifth employee, or I have to go to the beginning, read one by one, make sure that I did not do not fail, I didn't get to the end, and then read from the employee file into the employee and and show the value of the employee. And if uh, F that failed, I'm going to say I'm at the end of the file. So this essentially goes, shows exactly which one I have, which one I want to actually uh, deal with and go through. So one by one, it can actually show it and it can show me which employee I want, like employee number 10, employee number one, one by one, go through everything and show. But just think about it for a second like it, it actually shows it pretty nicely let me just go through it so you can see it so it shows everything nicely and it looks like everything's beautiful i showed one two three four five and i went to 19 and one by one it's actually showing the values but this is the most awful way you can actually get information from the file if i actually change this one to show so instead of actually showing it like this if i if i did it like this just imagine if i if i actually um, did it like this i said uh, while so in here i'm going to say first uh, i'm going to say um, uh, file dot clear And I'm going to have an I set to zero again. And I'm going to say while show. Is it show record? Yeah, show record. And I have a row number over here. So I'm going to put over here uh, plus plus I. And I'm going to put the file over here. So, <coughs> sorry, the file over here. So if I actually run this program now, as you see, I showed all the information again. So if you look at it, it looks like the code I have written over here, it's much more complicated than I have written like this. So the line number 34 is essentially doing one line number 26 to 28 is doing. Do we understand this? But in reality, behind the scenes, line number 34 is awfully slow. Why is it awfully slow? Take a look at it. This is how the show record actually reads. Let me bring the employee.txt up. So how does the how does the show record over here works? When I say row number three, it reads everything from the beginning to number three and then shows the third one. And then if I want the fourth, it reads from the beginning to the end. And this while loop of mine is dropping this show record thingy over and over, which means it's going to read the file. So it prints the first one. That's fine. Then to read the first, second one, it reads the first one and then prints the second one. To read the third one, it reads the first one and second one and print the third one. To print the fourth one, it reads the first, second, and third, and prints the fourth one. To read the fifth one, it reads one, two, three, four, and then print the fifth one. This is awful. Like, it's extremely bad. Obviously, using this show record, I can show everything in reverse or in traverse back, back and forth inside my file, but this is awful. When you think about such a thing, 
it looks like you are having some kind of a, uh, a traversing through a text file, but what happens behind the scene is extremely expensive and slow. Do we understand this? All right, so, <clears throat> so this one is very bad, very, very bad way of, <clears throat> very bad way of going through the file. So what is a good way of going through the file? Look, well, how do we, how we are supposed to actually deal with this? This is how we are having, we, this is how we, uh, we should do it. So <coughs> H-I, uh, G-H-I, so composite type text in yuck, dot cpp, okay? So what we need to do over here is something like this. So instead of writing the stuff inside the file as text, instead of writing the stuff inside the file as text, what I need to do over here is to go through everything that I have in that employee vector of mine, but instead of putting it in a text file, putting it in a binary file and simply pass every single employee as a character array to the size of employee and dump the memory inside the file instead of writing individual things as text. When I actually run this program, you will notice that, give it a second, what's going on? There you go. So when I run this program, <clears throat> if you look at employee binary thingy that we have right now, this is what you have. As you see, all the stuff are here. But I want to attract your attention to something. I'm going to go actually to the hard drive and take something, go to the directory. Um, I can actually go over here. It's easier. So I'm going to say over here. Um, All right. Take a look. I'm going to say over here uh, employee.txt and I'm going to go properties. Take a look. <coughs> it says size 500 and 75 bytes, okay? That's employee.txt, all right? 575 bytes. When I go over here, look at the size. It is 1.18 kilobytes, which means it is much bigger. It's almost twice the size. Can anybody tell me why? Why the binary file got bigger than the text file? Anyone? Looking at the employee.h, can anybody tell me why the binary file is bigger. Because every employee information is the same uh, memory. Same size, correct. Size. In yeah. yeah. In here, it's actually having 52 characters for each name. When you are typing it as, a, as when you are saving this as text, it only saves the, the amount of text that it has. But here, because you are dumping the whole thing, it doesn't care what is the size of the name. It's going to write everything. So it's going to write Flanders. And then the rest of it, as you see over here, 
are all the empty stuff that we have. Actually, it should go right down to, so this is zero, zero, as you see. That's the null termination after Flanders, but the rest of the stuff are all garbage in it. Do we understand this? All right, so doing something like this, it's a trade-off. So as you see, now that I have put stuff like this, put, put things in here, let me go back to what we had with the show record over here. So in here, I'm going to say composite uh, binary out, and this is j.cpp. Now I'm going to bring the next one in and show you what is the difference now between my show record in a binary format. Take a look. Now in my show record in here, I do not need to do any type of loops. Take a look. My show record receives the row number. Then it says seek to row minus one multiply to size of employee. So essentially it hops right into the address where the employee is sitting. Then it says read as binary into the address of E to the size of E. So it literally drags all the information from that one and pushes it back into the employee. Therefore, everything goes back in its places. All the garbage stuff and all the good stuff, everything goes back in. Therefore, I have no problem. There is nothing wrong with this thing. It's There is no loop. There is nothing. My show record literally jumps to the location of every single thing that I have when I want to go through it. And because of that, it's going to be extremely fast. It works the exact same way, but the difference is that when I actually want to jump to number 12, I don't need to go through every single one. I simply right away go to the address that I have, and I'm going to write, 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 write uh, read right uh, from the location that I have. And take a look, and I can read everything exactly as it is. Are we okay with this? All right, so that's about reading, and I said that it's much more efficient, so that's very fine. But there is another thing over here that is extremely uh, 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 useful, that is, so I'm going to say over composite binary in the CPP. And what is very useful over here is this. If you want to change something in a text file, let's say over here in this text file, if I want to change this name from Ned to Mike, if I want to do something like this, Ned to Mike, so it's three characters, I want to make it four. Can I do that in a text file? The answer is no. You can't do it. Because if I change this to Mike, for everything to take place properly, I have to shift everything to write. Remember that this a text file that you see on a text editor is not really a text file. It's all binary, and all these things are separated with, with new lines like that. So if I actually look at the text file, it's, it's one line that goes like this, and it keeps going all the way to the last one. So another backslash in, and it's like that. It keeps going. If I want to change this net to Mike, everything has to shift to right. So if I put over here Mike, see, it shifts back when I when I act, oh, so as you see, it's Ned, as soon as I change that to Mike, see what happens, it shifts to right, back, forth, 
So if I want to change one character, I have to rewrite the entire file right from the beginning to the end. And that's extremely expensive. But when you are having when you are having a binary file, because you are actually because you are actually because you are actually because you are actually saving the whole space for everything. If you change this net to mic, nothing's going to happen because you, ch you are within your size. You are not going out of that 52 bytes. And therefore, you can simply go halfway through your code, change something through your file, change one value, and then get back and everything is perfectly good. No shifting will happen and because of that you can have random access into a file which means read and write at the same time. You can go read the fifth record, come back, write something over the fifth, the second record and go back in a 500th record and change everything without the file being changed anywhere. Do we understand this? All right, so that's what, that's what we're going to talk about the next day you're, when you're coming to lab. So in lab, I'm going to actually show you how we can actually do the reading and writing. First, I'm going to do the reading and writing with, with that one so you can see actually how it's done. So um, the reading, we have already done this over here. So that is very, so let me just put this, did I save this? Yes, I did it. So that's binary in. And um, so, um, yeah, so the next day that we are going to come in, I'm just going to, let me see if this is okay. Yes. Yeah. So please go through all these things for the next day that you're coming in for lab. In the lab, what I'm going to do over here first, show you how we can modify, um, uh, show you how we can modify uh, values inside the binary file and notice that nothing changes. And also the most important thing is that I'm going to tell you how we can actually save classes with resources as binary files. But because if this employee over here, if the employee that I had over here instead of this was actually a dynamic employee, which had, for example, its name, it had its name over here as a pointer and held the values outside of its own stuff, then actually reading and writing it will be difficult because the values are not kept within the scope. If you write a binary thing, it simply writes the address, not the values. And therefore, when the program ends and you come back in, all you're going to have is going to be garbage, which we're going to talk about it next, next time we are coming in. And I'm going to show you how we can create index files, uh, with keys kept in an index file and the data kept in another binary file and we can jump through the addresses and go. But for that one, I need a big board with uh, uh, markers to show you exactly how that can be developed and done. Any questions? What I want to ask you to please is that I'm going to actually push everything that I have right now in here so oh did I create this whoopsie uh, let me just stop this <laughs> I put it in a in a bad directory let me just stop that cut paste all right so I'm gonna actually commit this over here I want you to really go walk through this and try to do some modifications and make it work. Um, go back and forth, try to write stuff in it, do read and write, uh, read the notes and see how it works. So the next day you are coming in, I'm going to give you some, we're going to do some 
crazy stuff and I want you to to be ready for it so please go review this I don't want to do more than this right now um, I want you to do read and write uh, do binary read and write in a file see how it work uh, get comfortable with it and when you're coming over here we're gonna do manual indexing not like so so you're gonna see exactly how, what happens and if we have a chance I'm gonna uh, teach you to how, to how to create hash functions to be able to access to access files quickly and so on and so forth so uh, here I'm gonna say uh, file IO commit and push but please 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 uh, uh, make sure that you uh, go through all these things and review it before you come the next day because we have lots of uh, interesting stuff to go through. Uh, any questions before we leave? Oh, somebody said yes. Oh, somebody said yes, and I and I did not see that. If you have a question, please let, uh, talk right now. I, I misclicked. I don't have a question. Oh, okay, all right, all right, good. Thank you. Anyways. Uh, and I see two people are not responding. Azusa is lost. I don't know where she is. Oh, here she, here she is. And uh, uh, Siam keeps going back and forth. So, so anyways, um, we are done for today. Have yourself a beautiful day. And I will see you on uh, the, the lab time. It's going to be lots of uh, file stuff that we are going to talk about. So be there and... Uh, Please review all these things. Have yourself a beautiful day and talk to you later. Bye, everyone.